In this video, I want to talk about splines, and specifically splines inside the Stride editor. So I love splines because you can do so many cool things with them. You can create camera paths, you can create objects on rails for, uh, for instance, for uh, helicopters or uh, airplanes. You could create roller coasters, trains, etc. You can also create a lot of geom geometry, like roads, cables and wires. And all of this is possible directly inside the editor. And all of these functionalities, they're programmable too, if you want to. But having this available directly inside the editor and actually seeing what your game is going to look like, that is really powerful stuff. So what I've been working on is a spline node component that you can attach to, well, entities or nodes inside your scene, which I've already done so. And as you can see to the right here, I have a spline node set up with uh, some work in progress debug options and some very primitive options to fill in some data, which hopefully will be even better in the future. Um, so what can we do here? First off, we need to set a next node. And all we have to do here is uh, select the node from this list, which is this node right here, which also has a splide node component attached to it. And right now you don't see a lot, but when I press that points button, you can see that we have these nodes being generated. And that's not a lot. So let's just increase the amount of segments of this particular spline, or cubic spline to be exactly, to 100. And you'll start to see things happening. Now note that this is a, uh, uh, a non-parameterized spline, which means that there is no even placement of segments just yet, but that will be added in the future. But this looks like a line, right? It isn't, doesn't look like a, a very cool spline at all. And that's because we haven't changed the tangents or the handlers of this spline. So right now, I need to demonstrate that I have an out handler. And if we place that out handler, let's start, that, uh, start with a little higher placement. And there we go. And that looks a little better already. If I position it a little bit along the blue Z axis, and you can start to see that spline coming to life directly in the editor. Now let's 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 move the actual node a little bit around just for fun. You can see that spline being updated as we go. And up here that that green thing here that's the out tangent or handler. I'm just going to call it handler for now. And as you can see it's creating this spline for us. And these are just some uh, debug gizmos. These are not actual uh, this is not actual geometry just yet, although, of course, you could use it for that. Um, and just like an out handler, we also have an in handler. So I'll have to debug that one too. Let's say we're going to set that to a little bit higher than the node 2, just a little bit. And we need to move that one too a little bit. Let's say, whoops, I edited the wrong one. And let's say that it's being moved to the left quite a lot. Here we, wow, that's, that was really extreme. And we get this cool super spline. If I would copy this guy, I can just keep on repeating this process for a while. Uh, let's rename it to spline three. There we go. And if I say node two, you know what? The next one is node number three. Okay. And let's move that node somewhere else in the scene. And I need to enable debugging here as well. And there we go, that, that spline keeps on being rendered. There, there are some, some glitches here and there. Uh, one of the next things that I'm working on is displaying an actual gizmo, just like the translation gizmo here. I wanna display a gizmo for all of the handlers that you can see so that you can actually see what's going on. Uh, things like spline followers or spline tracers or any kind of spline geometry generation components, those are part of the tool or part of the planning too. I really want to create roads and cables again to create dynamic floating cables. And obviously I have to work out a lot of the uh, performance issues that are currently still uh, a problem. Whoops. As you can see, if I would move this stuff around, then you can see some artifacts still not being rendered properly. I have to do something about that. 
but having these kind of things inside the editor that that's really useful and i think it can make a lot of people really happy because you can do so many cool things with these things that was a little bit extreme let's get that back to 20. here we go let's just go in the minus anyway that was just a little bit of the things uh, that's just uh, something i wanted to show you guys uh, I hope to see you again for the next video. Stay tuned and bye-bye. Uh,